most of the time a Linux user will say, don't bother with an NVIDIA GPU, just buy something from AMD. And for the most part, they are right. It's, for the most part, an easier and smoother experience. The kernel side is upstreamed, and every distro is going to be shipping Mesa. So, for the most part, things just work out of the box. Especially true for distros that care about licensing like Fedora, getting the proprietary NVIDIA driver set up can be a bit of additional work. However, don't let people trick you into thinking that AMD is absolutely perfect and nothing needs to be improved. It might be a nicer and smoother experience than NVIDIA, but there are things I would like to see. The first problem and the most evident is the complete lack of the AMD Adrenaline software or something equivalent from AMD, maybe something stripped down specifically for Linux. This is the AMD configuration software available on Windows. Now, if you're an NVIDIA user, you would know the NVIDIA control panel is available. Things might be laid out a little bit differently. Certain features might be missing that aren't available on Linux, but you have that software directly from NVIDIA. Now, because the AMD drivers are open source, you aren't left with just fending for yourself. There are alternatives available made by open source developers. Most notably, we have LACT and Core Control. There are some smaller projects floating around. There are some command line tools, but most people are going to recommend one of these two. Now, these are completely functional pieces of software doing the main things that you want to do. Overclocking, fan control, seeing GPU info, but if you are familiar using Adrenaline over on Windows, you might notice that a bunch of features seem to be missing, and no matter how many of these tools you look through, none of them are anywhere near as feature-rich. And you might think to blame the projects themselves, and some of them might have just not implemented certain features. However, this actually relates to our second problem. Whilst the AMD drivers are open source on Linux, they are not one-to-one -one equivalent with the features available on the Windows drivers. Sometimes this is due to a feature just simply not making sense on Linux, and this is absolutely understandable. If it doesn't make sense in the driver, it shouldn't be in the driver. However, some of these are cases like anti-lag, which attempts to reduce input lag in GPU-bound cases. Some of them are like chill, which reduces power draw by limiting the frame rate based on in-game movement. These features are not available on the Linux driver. Some are things like zero RPM, which is available in the Linux driver, but it can't be disabled. This is a feature where the fans don't turn on until above 50 degrees Celsius. Keep in mind, that is not a comprehensive list. It is just a few notable examples. A lot of the really interesting tech available for gaming on AMD GPUs is not available on the Linux drivers, and it's only available over on Windows. Now, some of the functionality can sort of be faked and cheesed through other means. For example, while super resolution is technically not supported, it can be faked with game scope to basically get the same effect. Anytime people talk about super resolution, they are going to suggest just go and run game scope. My point here is, even if there was the adrenaline software available on Linux, it probably wouldn't be any more featureful than the open source clients anyway. Maybe it would have a couple of other little things which aren't entirely clear based on the driver documentation, and I guess you could guarantee that with driver updates and as APIs change, the control panel is going to be updated to make sure it continues to work, whereas some of these open source projects may just get abandoned over time, may just have one developer working on them who doesn't have time to keep up with the changes. That's probably the only advantage you would really get. Maybe you could also argue it makes it just a little bit easier to find an AMD Linux control panel because the Windows software is now the software being used on Linux as well. 
I would only slightly disagree with that because there are these popular open source alternatives anyway. And if you search AMD Linux control panel, even though there is no AMD Adrenaline software, you're going to come across a Reddit post or a YouTube video or a forum post or something else out there directing you to one of these open source projects. But there is another problem with missing features. The features are not missing on Linux. They're missing from the AMD open source drivers because on Linux, there are two versions of the drivers. The open source drivers, the ones you're going to be using 99% of the time, they're perfectly fine for gaming, they're perfectly fine for video creation and basically everything else. But there are some edge cases where you want to use the AMD Pro drivers, the proprietary drivers. Firstly, and thankfully this has become a lot less important recently, you need AMD's implementation of OpenCL for doing GPU compute. Oftentimes you have the option of CUDA or OpenCL. So traditionally, OpenCL was your only option there. And if you're doing things like GPU rendering in Blender or DaVinci Resolve, you basically had to use OpenCL. Now, thankfully, there has been work on an open source implementation of OpenCL called Rustical available in the Mesa project. To the best of my knowledge, it's gotten pretty good, so you probably don't need this now, and if you do, won't need it for that much longer. As for CUDA though, there are projects being worked on like Zaluda for doing CUDA work on AMD GPUs. The second reason for AMD Pro is the Advanced Media Framework, better known as AMF, AMD's official GPU encoder. Now. You've probably watched videos and recorded videos and things like that and realize, wait, I actually don't need that on Linux. There are things in the open source driver. And yes, there are ways to do this with the open source driver, but you don't get AMF. AMF is specifically in AMD Pro. Namely, there are things like FFmpeg, and GStreamer. These are completely functional replacements. And most open source software out there that does anything regarding video is going to expect one of these instead. Now, when it comes to video capture, if all you care about is video capture happening with the GPU, they work perfectly fine. There's nothing inherently wrong with them. But if you care about the best quality, NVIDIA's NVENC completely blows them out of the water. And it wasn't the case years ago, but nowadays AMF is relatively in line with NVENC. My understanding is NVENC is a little bit better, but both are much, much better than the open source versions. However, you don't want to use the AMD Pro drivers. Now, there is a dirty little secret that often doesn't get mentioned about AMD on Linux. Whilst the drivers are open sourced, whilst the kernel module is open sourced and is upstream, this is not the entirety of the AMD stack. It's important to remember that there is this thing called Linux firmware. What is Linux dash firmware? Well, this is the bane of the Libre Linux kernels. This is a package that contains firmware blobs. Now, one of the companies that has firmware blobs in there is AMD for their GPUs. There is a part of the AMD stack that is proprietary, that being the firmware, and is probably never going to be open source. Maybe little parts of it here and there are going to get open sourced, and there has been work doing that for very tiny things related to compute. But the blob is still there, and you're still running it, whether you like it or not. Now, don't get me wrong here. AMD is in a much nicer state than NVIDIA is here. NVIDIA only very recently swapped to their open source kernel modules. The kernel modules that are not upstreamed. They also have the proprietary user space drivers, whereas AMD, it's open source in Mesa, and they have the proprietary firmware. So NVIDIA is still a lot more proprietary, but don't think AMD is perfect here. Now, sometimes the problem on AMD GPUs isn't because of AMD itself, it's because of groups they have to deal with. 
The problem I'm talking about is the HDMI problem. HDMI on AMD GPUs is supported up to a point. That point being HDMI 2.0. And AMD is not to blame for this whatsoever. They could probably go and make a proprietary implementation or maybe add it into their pro drivers, but it can't be in the open source driver thanks to the HDMI forum, who is basically refusing to allow the spec to be used in an open source implementation because I guess that leaks the specification. Since NVIDIA's user space driver is proprietary, they never had to deal with this problem. I do hope AMD comes up with some solution to deal with this. As I said, they could have a small proprietary part or at least have it in AMD Pro, but on the bright side, it doesn't brick those HDMI 2.1 ports. Much like with USB, if for whatever reason it cannot run at maximum speed, whether that be because of a driver or because of a cable, it is going to run at the highest supported lower speed. So that might be 2.0, it might be 1.4, so on and so forth. Also, most of you probably don't need HDMI 2.1 to run your displays. We're talking 8K 60 Hertz, 4K 120. If you're in that class and need that, DisplayPort is going to work perfectly fine. That is an open spec, and it's probably going to be nicer to use anyway. But if you need HDMI for that, sadly, NVIDIA is your only option. And the final thing is anything AMD is missing on the Windows side that would be nice from NVIDIA is also probably missing on the Linux side as well. It doesn't magically become better just because the drivers are open source. If AMD doesn't want to support something, they're not going to support something. Now, none of this is to say that AMD is bad. Don't buy AMD. This is my old AMD GPU. I've got an AMD GPU in my system right now. I buy AMD GPUs when I'm doing stuff on Linux. There are some things I would like from NVIDIA, absolutely. But AMD is a much smoother and much simpler process, and it makes sense why people suggest it. But don't be fooled into thinking that everything is perfect and everything is better than NVIDIA. CUDA is nice to have, NVENC is nice to have, but hey, at least we didn't have many, many years of Wayland constantly flickering. But let me know your thoughts. What do you buy? Have you bought yourself an AMD GPU? Do you have an NVIDIA GPU? Maybe you're an Intel GPU user, or maybe you don't buy a discrete GPU and just use whatever's on your CPU. I would love to know. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribes, and Libero Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I might buy an Intel GPU in the future just because it sounds kind of funny, but besides that, I'm probably sticking AMD.